It is Sunday, November 26, 2017, and school is officially Whoa! Yo, I didn't even finish the intro. My bad. I hit the nah. I hit the. Oh, I hit the button. It always got like a delayed effect for whatever. Copyright down. There he is. <laughs> so um, it's Sunday, November twenty sixth, twenty seventeen. We're back. The schools and posse is is back. Um, I am Mitch once again, as always. It's on. So I am joined by my two illustrious co-hosts, as always. Um, and uh, apparently, you're the grimy one here. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> I'll take it. And maybe, up, maybe Aaron just a little bit muddy. Uh, <laughs> a little, a little gritty. Gr- gritty, gritty, not a not grimy, gritty. But gritty. Not got me, but gritty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I am the one who is made uncomfortable by all these things. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, so t- today, on our show, we have another list show for you today. But before we get to that, I want to remind everybody to follow us and like us on Facebook and Twitter. And please subscribe to us on Blog Talk Radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, CastBox, and whatever outlet that you like to listen to your podcast on, make sure you subscribe to us. Even if you hate our show, you can hate, subscribe to us, listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. Just uh, We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it how we can get it. So today's show is the list show. We're doing another top five, and it is our favorite grimy hip hop MC duo or group edition of the list show. I can't remember who we started off with last time. Um, but let's start off with number five. So we're up right. on our number five grimy hip hop MC duo or group edition. And before we, I go, on, let's let's talk a bit before I go with that about what grimy means to us. <laughs> Okay, okay. What's grimy mean? Underpass rapists, rappers. Well, yes. Um, as I like to uh, sometimes call them, freeway underpass rapist rappers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, allegedly. So, so okay. just to be clear, that's not like necessarily like gangster rap. It's not straight gangster rap. It's, uh... No, it is not. Uh. Cause that, cause that would mean anybody. Right. It's gotta be a certain type. It's gotta be like you have to look like you you need a bath, like you haven't bathed in a while. Like like you're wearing dusty Tims and a hoodie. You gotta go off a certain <laughs> <Does it>, floor. <laughs> yeah. Does your does your yeah. music have to sound? Your music just gotta sound like that. Like even if you don't look that way, like your and your music sound that way, do you still qualify? Your music has to sound that way. You have to look that way in general. Like you have to look like there's a coating or a layer of dust that is settled onto you. Oh man. <laughs> it's, not just, it's not just any old. So I'm not just gonna throw any old gangster group. Like like we aren't talking about that on this list. Like. It's somebody who an old lady would cross the street if they saw them coming because they're afraid. <laughs> and they start clutching their pocketbooks like that. You That's gotta be, you gotta be, You got to be the black dude from the Peanuts group. Yes. You need to be no, picking. I mean, you need on to the be side picking. of the table by yourself. Exactly. You need to look like somebody should fear you just a bit, like a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, so don't get mad at me because I call it Freeway Underpass Rapist Rap. I'm not saying that that they really will <laughs> rape you. I'm saying 
you could understand how someone would get that impression. <laughs> is, my, is mystical on anybody's list? <laughs> mystical should be on everybody's list. <laughs> mystical is an actual rapist. <laughs> he has been convicted twice now of actual rape. So he is not um, on my list because he is an actual rapist. He should be on everybody's list. I don't think he did it the second time, man. You gotta learn. I don't know. He, 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 he had to learn. If you got the if you got the if you gotta ask more than once that he did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask more than once he on that list. I don't have any actual rapists on my list that I know of, actually. That's, <laughs> so that's why he did not go on the list. So, number five, yeah, no, uh... here, and, <laughs> 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 since you started the air, number five, I'm, I'm, you started off. Number five on my list is Schoolboy Q. Oh, man. Oh, wow. I feel like he should be yeah. five, four, and three on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man! Like, much. all right, where do I start with Schoolboy, man? Like when I first when I first heard Schoolboy, um, it was it was almost like a breath of fresh air because it was like a it had been a long time, yeah, because it it was like twenty, <laughs> it was like it was like twenty ten, twenty eleven, I think it was. It's been a while since I heard. Rapist lyrics in his caliber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it had been a while. It had been a while, yo. Like off air, off air. Me and Miss, me and Miss Bitchy was talking about like how you know grimy, like in the early two thousands. That's true. He said, so, like, it's been a while since I heard rapist, rapey lyrics of this caliber. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, I was like, you know, he, 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 he on some, he on some hardcore shit. I ain't heard in a while, so you know, it was, yeah. it was. It was that kind of energy I was getting from him, and then the I was kind of shuffling between him and um, Nipsey Hussle because they like the only two that I would put in this category from this era. Uh-huh. And um, but like with Nipsey, I feel like he more he more along the lines just falling to gangster rap for me. Like you know, it's just mm-hmm. like straight. He's more like Snoop yeah, to like me. yeah, right, he right. Happens, he, he, he like just happens to be rapey every now and then. Right. Yeah, he look like he look like a super <laughs> prodigy baby. He does. Oh my god, he does. He looks like super prodigy had a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but um. Does. But yeah, um, schoolboy, like he he kind of he kind of crossed that line of just straight gangster rap for me. It wasn't just nah. Schoolboy it was it was some, some kind of weirdness going on with him that like he makes me feel mad uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Like when I see him, I, I have an urge to jump in the shower. Like not even. <laughs> yeah. Still not clean. Still not clean. I can't. I can't really get with schoolboy like that. Like I actually did a piece one time where I was talking about how it's not possible for people in my era to really, really like schoolboy Q and like rich homie Quan. Like we need to stop that. But it's okay. Like I get it for you though. <laughs> now, I mean, like it's it's older people that I noticed that like into Schoolboy Q. I think because I like he is he is kind of that that reminder of you know what what mm-hmm. you know some rap used to be like. So I mean, yeah. Even though even though he not as like he ain't he not as consistent as I, as I would like him to be. Like you know as far as songs go, his last album was pretty decent though. I liked it. I think that's my issue with him. It's just inconsistent. Well, that's my issue with everybody in this era. Is there is their inconsistency? Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't deal with that. Yeah, I would listen to Spook Boy first, just because, like, consistency not withstanding. Like, he's one of those people that are reminiscent of the older times, even though it might be a little rapey. <laughs> I think one of the only songs I had heard by him was what? What, what is it? Collard Greens? Was it Collard Greens? Oh no! You gotta listen to the old stuff. You gotta listen to like habits yeah. and contradictions and uh yeah. and, 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 and set, set back. People have told me Yeah, you gotta listen yeah, to like those. I listen to, but see, that's my issue is that I, if I had to go back and listen to shit where you were a different person and now you like sold your sound <laughs> out so you can be, I can't fuck with you like that. Yeah, like his stuff more. His stuff more so now. It kind of like it kind of like borderlines like it's like, like trash. Gangs- yeah, yeah, like gangster anthems and stuff like that. It's kind of weird. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like he got he got like some and he got like songs in between like all the all the grimy stuff where you know he talk about like you know uh his daughter he talk about you know what I'm saying like uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like you know is is you know he got ahead of the the bros the bros song the song for the bros his homies <laughs> of course um yeah because they all but, um, all grimy dudes gotta have their bros song because that that's what's important. Yeah. Over, the bros, the, the, the bronies, over, gotta have the bros. It's, it's all about the bros. Um, okay, so my number five, why Ann is chewing in my ear. My number <laughs> five <laughs> is Eric and Parrish making dollars. Oh, shit. Number and five? He, yes, it and, number but here's five. the... Here's the reason why. So I have two reasons why they're number five and why they're on my list, period. Okay. So let's take it back a, a little bit further. And on the show, we talked history before and what things used to be like uh-huh. in hip hop. Now, even though Run DMC kind of threw it back to the old days when people were like or like you know like the origins of hip hop and they started wearing their street clothes fashion wise by the time you got to the late 80s even though the hip hop groups and MCs and stuff weren't stepping on stage dressed like you know like how how Fab Five used to dress cause I mean you know they used to drive Fat Five, crazy. Fat, Fat, Fat Five, Fat Five, pretty uh, grimy. Now that I think about it, yeah. But I mean, but I mean, they used yeah. to dress all. They were, but they used to dress all, you know, crazy and, you know, wearing all these outlandish outfits. Like they, we we discussed this on the show before. Groups like them and like Soul Sonic Force, Africa Bambada. They had these outrageous costumes on stage. By the time you got to the late 80s, even though cats like Big Daddy and they didn't they didn't come on stage dressed like that, but they still wore like a really really clean version. They would wear like Dapper Dan gear. Mm-hmm. They still right. wanted to be flashy. You know, they, they wanted to come they on stage. They wanted to evoke, evoke those they, emotions. But they wanted to show you how they could be still flashy. It was street flashy, you know. You had like the Dana Dames and the, you know, SM stage wearing all like be all leathered out and you know wearing their Gucci boots. And, like that was their version of being hip hop fly. But then you got EPMD coming through the scene. They didn't do none of that shit. <laughs> EPMD came with the straight from day one. They was hoodies and Tim. Yeah. And they had this very darkness. There was a dark undertone to all their music. All their beats were dark and ominous sounding in general. Like they yeah, didn't, they didn't subscribe to that to that upbeat sound and hip hop when everybody else was on it. They were on there and they were grimy. They yeah. they brought that grimy to you. So they're like the original grimy New York group that all the other groups that you see kind of got inspired by. So that, that, that's why they're on my on my list. And then number five because they aren't as grimy as some other groups became, but they kind of started it a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But it's funny that like, you know, I mean, I get exactly where you're coming from on that, but I feel like a lot of people wouldn't like a lot of people will probably look at EPMD and they like, Oh, you know, because of like where we where we at now or what some people like, you know, like the definition changed so much it's like, <laughs> Oh, you know, they kinda they like hearted in <laughs> you know But they really weren't though. And people like like even with songs like Gold Digger and Headbanger and like they were grimy. Right. They had a grimy. When you compare them to other groups of their era, they had a grimy sound. Yeah. Yeah. True. Cause like I mean, other groups didn't have those kind of beats, like EPMD kind of had, and they weren't wearing Tims on stage. 
Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's where that the fine line comes in that like that early nineties like transition. I feel like that's the fine. Yeah, like it's yeah. a defining line though, like because like I like I just said, there's people like especially people <laughs> our, our age that like if I would just sit here and say, you know, all right, you know, Mob Deep makes perfect sense to me coming from you know the EPMD thing. Somebody mm-hmm. else would probably be like, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like because mm-hmm. that transition, that transition is kind of is almost drastic. But that's why you need context. Because people yeah. don't understand. But there was a lot of happy-go-lucky shit happening at the time. You know, we were definitely... Right. That was that was the mainstay of that of that era. Like, we didn't have a whole lot of dark, ominous type of, you know, hip-hop that was out there. And they were ones that kind of... They, they brought that to us. Yeah, well, hip-hop yeah. was still fun. It was still fun around that time, you know? Mm-hmm. It definitely was. Okay, so... Aunt number five. Number five. My number five will have to be Sean. Okay. Aaron, uh, Aaron and I are very curious. Just because of everything? Everything that you named? And explaining yours? But at the same time, like, Sean always been like a gritty type rapper. And I feel like for him to keep that up from behind bars... Just exemplifies that. You know what I'm saying? Like if he's into if he's into whatever whatever uh, mold we have set for him. If he's into whatever image we have set for him, that he's in jail right now for doing some grimy shit. For him to keep up that grimy rap, I felt like was appropriate. Mm. But, but but isn't he he's a he's Jewish now, right? He's Jewish now. His first project his first project from behind bars wasn't like a Jewish rapper though. No, it was still grimy. Well, yeah. But even even still, while he was a Jewish rapper living that Jewish lifestyle People still giving you grimy Jewish bars. <laughs> uh, Aaron. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how we feel about that. I mean, I, I feel like this taking us. I feel like this taking us back to the conversation that we talk about, like always, like um, romanticizing the jail, the jail lifestyle, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he been he he's been in jail for a very long time. But nobody, I mean, nobody's on my list because they actually been to jail. They on my list because they they genuinely like, you know, they they grimy. They they yeah, they grimy and they and they kept that cons- they kept that consistency throughout their well, yeah, music yeah. music regardless of what. Yeah, he's not he's not on my list just because he's been in jail. He's on my list because like when he when he first came out, his first drum was a grimy drum, and he just so happened to get locked up. But he kept that same energy going. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. He's seen the opportunity. He's seen the opportunity. I'm in jail and people were looking for me for Grammy bars. So I'm going to give them Grammy bars. Grammy jail bars. Well, yes. Jail bars are definitely Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can be Grammy. Jail bars can no, be Grammy. I mean, actual jail bars are grimy. Yeah, actual jail bars. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who's actually in jail? We can we can corroborate yeah. that. No, it's I'm funny how the bars in jail are actually grimy. And yeah, it's funny how you can like <laughs> easily. <laughs> it's funny like how you can easily associate like you know jail with that type of thing because it's like uh I was talking to my cousin and was talking about uh like the Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj thing. Yeah. And um, my cousin was like talking about how Remy she treated the whole situation like jail. Basically, it's like I got out of jail, and now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the most popular female artist right now, and and, mm-hmm. and and claim my dominance. Like, and I'm like, yeah, that's how Grammy Red works. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. Like, you gotta you know. walk up to the biggest baddest person and punch him in the face. Like, that's what yeah, you're yeah. To do. <laughs> But I feel like Sean with his first couple of drums did that. I feel like with his first couple of drums he did that. You you really? 
I feel like he did it lyrically. I don't know if he did it physically. I mean, when <laughs> when when Shine came out though, I feel like everybody was kind of like fighting for that spot. Oh well, Big and Pop just yeah. died, so mm-hmm. you know who gonna, who going to be next up? Well, there was a lot of that. A lot he just of so that. happened to be doing it for Joe. I gotta think about that one. I don't know if I have anything to say this much right now. He, about he, Sean. he just so happened to be doing it for Joe. Like, I actually great. remember. I actually remember where I was at when Sean came out, and I think the most, the biggest thing that we all kept focusing on with Sean was how much he sound like. Yeah. Yeah. That might be but, the only downside with Sean. And I think that that threw most of us off. It definitely threw me off, and it, it I couldn't get over it pretty much to even to really even focus on him enough. <coughs> Go back yeah, and play right. some time and see see what happens. Okay, number four, Aaron. Number four. Number four on my list. Mhm. Is the locks. Number four. Uh oh. Uh oh. Number four. Yeah, Uh-oh. most definitely. <laughs> and the reason, and the reason they on my list is because you know. The reason they number four, you should say. Oh, the reason they number. Oh, you want to know why they number four? Why they number four? <laughs> because they like, they like. I'm, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going a little. My list is a little bit more, you know, the opposite direction of where I think Ms. Mitchell going with hers. So, I, I'm going to like the last, like the last grimy. A rap group or the era like that I re- that I was into like before mm-hmm. you know everything kind of died down like that's what we was yeah. into before it, before everything uh-huh. died down everything was you know um, um, DMX the Rough Riders the Locks you know what I'm saying and you know for those that don't know DMX is uh, omitted from this list yeah DMX is banned Wu Tang is banned and um, Mob Deep is banned right that right be, uh, that would be our top three. <laughs> right, right, in some way, shape, or form. But um, yeah, like um, that's like that's that's like what I was listening to like a lot, like heavily, like especially like um, what ninety eight, ninety nine, ninety. Like mind you, like we was we was young around that time listening to this shit. So okay. <laughs> it was it was you know what I'm saying like that and like that's that's all that's a lot of I won't say that's all. It was a lot of what you know I was listening to. And, I got um, them as number two, right? And like when I get like, you know, like you know, you you get older or whatever. Like I got to a certain point where you know the sound started dying down, and you know you start getting older, a little more mature. And like I, I tell Anthony this all the time, like I don't listen to the locks the way I used to. You know what I'm saying? Like when I do now, it's like more so for nostalgia purposes, because like yeah. there a lot a lot of their new stuff is like you know. It's not. It don't do it for me. You know what I'm saying the way it used to. Like I like when I was telling y'all about the uh, the Saha John. I was listening to him go in or whatever, and I'm like, all right, this is cool. But I already know I'm gonna listen to this once because it's not. You know what I'm saying it's not where my head is at. Like um, yeah, I feel like as the locks on the so, Um, that's uh, but yeah, the locks man, real real heavy fan man. Like it don't get no grimier than Styles. She can kiss and like it was like. They was like the perfect combination of like you know different people like because you. I feel like they get that. They know that. Yeah, because you like you know what I'm saying like you always had like kiss with the slick talk and he always said something that was just like like oh man you know what I'm saying you heard what kiss said like you know everybody always had the reaction when you hear when you hear kiss say some old fly shit whether it was about you know uh uh what do you say I hope you ain't tongue. I hope you ain't tongue kissing your spouse because I'll be, you know what I'm saying, all in her mouth. Oh, and, all, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like that. Like, you know, like, but. Yeah. Yeah, it get, it get real green. And these are the reasons they, why I did not like the lock. I, could, I think yeah. I was, I think I had gotten too old. By the time right. the lock yeah, came that, out, I, I think, I think. Yeah, that's why I understand it. Like that made perfect sense to me because, like, around the time when I was listening to all those cats, like, even like Cassidy, like people, like older cats would be like, eh, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, older yep. people would be like, man, eh, that ain't, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But, um. No, well, I mean, you gotta realize, I listen to, like, we listen to shit that was, just, like, I'm gonna I'm a keep reiterating. Ice Cube made Nappy Dugout. So it's yeah. not yeah, like. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I wasn't listening to shit that was just really, really disgusting. I had gotten to a point in my life where I just didn't necessarily want to be listening to that type of shit all the time. So yeah, lot, exactly. Yeah, they missed me. Like same thing with DMX. It, I like DMX though. I actually did bump DMX, but not like everybody else did because I had started passing that point. I was hitting like. I was like in my late later twenties, like going yeah. over the that hump when they came out. I was like twenty five, twenty six when DMX came out. No, nah, actually I was younger when DMX came out. When he first right. came out with Get At Me Dog, I was a li- I was probably about twenty four, maybe. But yeah, like when the locks came out, it was just it was too much for me at that point. It was like okay, really, alrighty. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was kind of. I'm a pass. I'm a pass on that. Like, but it was gangsta rap done well. It was gangsta rap done well. I mean, I love again. I think I like Styles P and Sheik a little better, but y'all know how I feel about monotone. I can't deal with Jada Mm -hmm. because I can't listen to his. I can't listen to it. It's just for me. Styles is the best. Styles is the best of the three. Styles is the best of the three, and I like Sheik because. Some people love Jada just, best. They do, cause Jada's a spitter. I give him that. I mean, he is, but I just if I don't want to hear you spit, that's right. just where I am. I don't know. Especially but, talking um, about that shit. That shit he was talking but, about. But isn't he? Well, I guess we'll get to what number he is on your list, cause I, I know I know he's on Ant's list. Well, Only on because Ant's list. I know the last on Ant's Only by association. Okay, so my number four to all my old heads out there, I'm keeping my list straight, gangster and old in general. My number four is Alcoholics, aka The Licks. Oh wow! Everybody out That's there! Good. Everybody <laughs> out there! Wow! Who knows where I'm coming from? What's wrong the with What's wrong why? with Why you say wow? Cause I wasn't expecting that. And it's not just a wow, you know. The licks, the licks definitely deserve a spot on all of our lists, but mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting well, to hear this list. <laughs> well, I'm the I'm the old head, so I gotta keep, I gotta hold the the old the old Jones down. So the licks is grimy AF as fuck. They, they lyrical too. They, yo, they're lyrical as fuck. They were, um, you know, introduced to us by King T, also of the West Coast, because the Alcohol was a West Coast group. And King T was also grimy as I don't know what. So, you know, you gotta love that. You gotta love the grimy person bringing you somebody grimy as hell. All they talked about was, was down in 40s and being drunk at parties. And inappropriate shit with women. You know, it talks about being drunk and screwing bitches. The alcohol is cool. Yeah, they were definitely grimy as fuck. And they were West Coast, but they were still lyrical. Which is pretty the cool. only reason I listened to them, most liked to them, mm-hmm. but to me, was because I liked the exhibit. <laughs> That's the only reason I listen to the alcoholic. Wow. It's because I like the exhibit. Well, and exhibit was, exhibit was, um, he was. He, he was, was the rare man. He was the rare man today, Wu Tang. Well, he was prominently featured on the second album too. Yeah. Um, and I love exhibit, but um, yeah, I love the alcoholics. Like their first album was, and it, their first album just had a bunch of like really short songs on it the first album was 21 and over it had a bunch of little short songs on it but it it still was like heavily widely acclaimed like everybody fucking loves the licks first album like that was the shit you threw on when you like wanted to 
like uh, when I was in college and you were about to get like down some forties and and smoke. Yo, everybody threw the licks on. Only when I'm drunk. <laughs> Only when I'm for me, drunk. For me, for me, they was they was heavily featured artists. I don't know about all that. For me, for me. <laughs> yeah, they were, um, you know, they and they they had that West Coast flavor. So they didn't always have the hoodies on, but they had on those, you know, those um, those those Johns where you wore a white beater under it. Those <laughs> those um, <laughs> they always wore like jeans and like like. Um, ball caps and they were like they always had struggle beards you know <laughs> they, 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 they sound grimy <laughs> and they sounded grimy the music was real ominous and they wore those um, um, they used to call them um, oh my god not Carhartt they wore Carhartt too though back in the day if you wore Carhartt you was probably fucking grimy oh yeah but That's they, why I wanted a car heart. Uh, <laughs> but they wore yeah, the, another, um, Yeah, that's the another reason. That's another reason why you can't even put can't even put my beef on this list, man. Why? Cause that's all they that's all they rap about was uh, Tim's and car hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they grimy as fuck. They're the epitome of grimy grimy hip hop right there. Car heart um, coats and gas jeans. <laughs> what? Is, oh my God! I can't think. Oh, flannels. They used to wear flannels. But if you were grimy as fuck back in the day, you wore flannels like a motherfucker. The red and black lumberjack with the head. Yo, to you had to wear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Biggie almost made my list. Really? Not me though. He wasn't grimy almost. enough. Not trying <laughs> Yeah, a little yeah, a little bit too much. Okay, what's your number four, Aunt? My number four is gonna be MOP. Whoa. Oh, I'm frightened. I'm leaving. MOP just cause I based them in a feature artist category. They right there with A Z for me. A Z and I would go as far as to say Missy Elliott. Like I I didn't really listen to too many of their solo joints. Mm-hmm. But whenever whenever you got a track with M O P on it or Missy, for example, for for uh what you call it example purposes. Like you know yeah. the track gonna be grimy as shit. Featuring M O P. Right, yeah, no doubt, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, MLP is definitely they they're grimy as fuck. They just they they scare me a lot. Right. They yeah they do. <laughs> they fit that freeway underpass rapist. Oh my god. No. For you to, for you running. to even for you to even for you to even fit in a certain category back then you had to have like a primo beat with an MOP feature. <laughs> right? MOP seem like they seem like they were born to a primo beat. <laughs> they really <laughs> was. <laughs> Both of them. They Both really were. Yo, I'm sorry. They scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Both of them. And I did. I did go back and listen to their debut album. I listened to their debut album, but they still belong as feature artists with me. I would. I would concur with that. But they were definitely somebody you put on your shit if you want your shit to be extra fucking grimy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, there's up. no other reason. No other reason to have M O P on your job. Yeah. Other than what in that grimy type title for a feature or whatever. Yeah, I would definitely cross the street if I saw them coming. Like not even no. funny. No questions asked. No questions asked. I'm like they'd be like, "Oh hey," I'd be like, "No, officer." I'd be clutching my bags and my pearls. Your bag and your pearls. You and clutch pearls. all of that. Clutch all, all of that. that. MOP. Um, so, um, let's go out to lunch real quick so we can come back to the list. And um, well, we gotta we gotta keep our shit short because we gotta we still got three 
people we gotta get to though, but So, um, who we got out to lunch today? I think we got a few things we gotta talk about. What y'all wanna talk about? Um, I think Aaron and I off air brought up old ass grimy people not growing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah I, thought we gonna, I, thought, I thought we was gonna talk about uh your boy Ken. Camera and well, he we falls in that category. He uh, falls in that category. So does um because we were talking about Benny Siegel, who's also grimy as fuck. Yeah. And, and yeah, he's no on the list. Same so thing. Up. Hey, you know, apparently there's a whole lot of money in Broad Street bullying. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that's a very lucrative field these days. Not anymore. Yeah. No, I don't know. Anymore. I think. I think. I think he more like. I don't even think like he indulged like he used to back in the day. Like he do things yeah. for aesthetics now. Yeah, like he 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 live in New Jersey. Like Beans live in New Jersey. He chilling. Well, he living he was, his life for real. He went to jail too many times. I think he finally learned his lesson about not wanting to go back to jail. Yeah. My whole thing is that shit been it been ain't cool to be a jail nigga. <laughs> It has, it has been the common the common perception of that is to not be cool to be a jail nigga. Uh, I mean, I should hope so, but I mean, I get some of these little young knuckleheads still going through that shit now, but like Beanie Siegel, Cameron coming at Mace with and no, no. like this, this manufactured beef because if you listen no, to yeah. Mace, he said that shit wasn't even real in the first place. It's from the from the jump. It wasn't. It wasn't. He like he like him and and Dame Dash. For all those who know who Dame Dash is, um, original Rockefeller Records, um, head honcho. Him and Kareem and Big Burke and Jay Z, all three of them together in Rockefeller. But um, and you know. Dame is the one that signed Cameron in the first place. And Cameron and Mace used to be together back doing Harlem World back in the day. Before that. Yeah. Children of the corn, children of the corn. And they grew up together in, and they went to middle school together. Like they were boys. So Cameron cooks up this, him and Dame were like, yeah, let's do this fake beef with each other so we can make more money. Like, dude, no. No. I don't think that, no. I don't know. I think that was And now, bad. all these years now, like, it's 2017, and you coming at him with this, this old ass, like, grow the fuck up. Yeah, that's, that's, that whole situation is weird. Like, just, like, you know, like, that's, that's just more of a reason, like, why we need to, like, get out of this whole, you know, hip hop forever fix. Like, everybody just, everybody just, stuck in this whole mind frame like this is the way you go about it like you know and now it's getting to the point it's it's to the point well it's been to the point where it's like the whole the whole genre the whole culture is like it's a joke now you know what I'm saying like it's not even yeah. like like back in the day back <laughs> in the day, if somebody really had a problem with somebody like the the beef record came out of a maybe a maybe a serious personal issue but nowadays it's just Oh well, you know, let's just let's just do it for the likes now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm-hmm. crazy. Now it's just annoying. Well, you know, some of it is I guess legitimate, like what the XXX Tentashi and me go see. Yeah. Uh, you know. That's just annoying too. You know what's funny about it that is, to me but though? But they're so young and stupid. See, but what's funny about that to me is that you got people that come from that older era that feel like oh these young cats are soft now rap ain't what it used to be the the grimy era is over like Joe like Joe would say some shit like that like you know what happened to the beef and rap and then now you got like or older like, cats or like, oh, oh, um, chance is too positive go do cocaine right, right. or get shot <laughs> but now 
But now you got when you when you say stuff like that, now you got older cats that's fabricating beef, and then you got the younger cats that's just doing dumb shit. And now you, as the person that was saying that before, is looking like this is dumb, and why are these young kids acting like that? But a minute well, ago, because you they're was following all, behind you. Exactly, in the whole narrative that you know, like, I mean, I I get it. Like it was a time where you know everybody was okay with it, but it's. Something is something that it's you know everybody needs to get past. Let's move on. Let's hold our clothes and and move on. Word, it, word. Yeah, hold your clothes. Hold your clothes. Hold your clothes. Hold your clothes. You know, it's but you know, folding your clothes is boring. Folding your clothes is boring. It is. I mean, I want everybody <laughs> to be alive at the end of the day. You know, I mean, I get it. You got hit. Here's my thing with hip hop beef, and I want to, I want to show this. And I want to say this and big up my ladies. Do what the ladies are doing. Keep that beef, as we would say back in the day. Keep that shit on wax. I don't okay? know, though. I don't know, though. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's, it's that true. shit on wax. If it's true that Remy and Nikki, not Remy and Nikki, but Remy and uh, Lil' Kim are beefing with Nicki Minaj after all of that shit went down, like, that shit is corny to me. I think they're beefing with her because of them, of them, their, their complaints of what Nikki has done to their careers or attempted to do to, to, um, to their careers behind closed doors. I, me personally, I'd rather see them focus to go at Rhapsody or somebody like that. Um, but so they don't have, they don't have true beef with somebody like that. They got 100% beef with, with, um, I, Nikki, that's no, why. No, no, no. Nikki ran her lane. Ricky, Nikki took their lane as far as it'll go. No, no, but no, no. But, but I'm saying they, they, but they're, they're attacking her out of a, out of. A, what I'm saying is they're attacking her out of an actual beef that they have, that, that they really have with her. Because yeah, my thing Nikki, is, my thing is, they need, they, need, they need to team up with Nikki to go at Rhapsody. <laughs> no. <laughs> Genuinely, do not like Nikki. They're not gonna team up with her. They need to team they, up with Nikki to go against Rhapsody. They're not gonna do that. But they like, y'all well, you gotta remember, you gotta remember, like what the perception of rap is too now, and fuck, like the perception fuck, of rap now, like fuck, Rhapsody fuck, not fuck, even fuck all that, fuck all that, Rhapsody, fuck the perception. But the I'm perception, saying like Rhapsody don't even on. Rhapsody don't even count in the conversation for that other side. Rhapsody, of people. Rhapsody counts in the conversation as dope as MCs. Period. They don't care I mean, about that. They have. They yeah, have they don't care. About... They have genuine they beef with her. They should like that shit with Nikki. Is but they're stupid. not gonna team up with Nikki because they have little Kim knows in her heart, and if you know in your heart as you should that Nikki is just she's just a style <laughs> fabricator. She literally stole little Kim's aesthetic. So yes, Kim got actual beef with her. My Remy thing, my my has whole actual beef with her. My whole thing, like looking at all this, like looking at all this is only going to get you the number two or number three slot. If y'all really want progress, y'all need to team up and jump Rhapsody because Rhapsody got the number one slot. But Rhapsody jump her for what? She neutral in the conversation. Because, like she yeah, she neutral. If you're gonna come at if you're gonna come at anybody for a slot in hip hop, it should be the one that's going for the top, not the one that's going for the number that two would or number be, three. Wouldn't that be Cardi right now though? Yeah, Cardi exactly. Ain't going, Cardi. Cardi ain't got the number one slot. No, nobody in their right mind is going to give Cardi the slot over. over she Rhapsody. already got it. I'm she saying, already got Cardi it, though. Cardi, she got, has the Cardi slot. got She got the number one mainstream slot. Yeah, and people realize that, that that's the number one mainstream slot. But that's slot. where Nikki was at, too. Like, uh, like, just a second ago, Nikki was the number one. I've never said anything about Nikki being an actual MC. She's a mainstream rapper. Yeah, mainstream rapper. That ain't worth That's shit. It. That ain't worth shit compared to people that really care about the culture and people that really care about the craft. I understand People that really that. care about the craft and the culture, they're looking at K. Michelle. They're looking at Rhapsody. They're looking at uh, Nikki Street. They're looking at people like that. They're looking at Jean Grey. They're not looking right. at... Right. I get that. But I'm saying... That. I'm saying so, they're like, coming... If y'all gonna... But, but they're coming for her thing, y'all, on a beat. If y'all gonna, if y'all gonna waste that energy... If y'all gonna waste that energy going at somebody, it need to be at somebody that's in the number one slot, not somebody that's. They in the don't care slot. about that. 
They they <laughs> have legitimate <laughs> beef with her, and they're beefing with her because they got legitimate beef with her. That shit is corny. That is That's old. That's what, what the hell is corny. the beef is about. That's what actual it's beef corny. is for. Yeah, that, really is. Beef, that beef is corny. That shit is whack. Ain't nobody, nobody want to be with Nicki Minaj. That's just whack. Nicki Minaj ain't got shit. Nicki Minaj is on her way out. Why are you beefing with her? Well, part of the reason why she's on her way out is because Remy came at her. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the reason. Yeah, yeah. Remy did her thing, and Remy. Remy like, came Remy at her. Thing. She did her it's, thing. It's almost like it's almost it's almost. It's almost it's almost like you like back in the day like when people was dissing Vanilla Ice. It's like why waste your time on somebody that don't like in your opinion don't count. You know what I'm saying? But it's like why was, why the, that's, how the, that's how the culture that's how the culture gonna react yeah. to anybody but, for, why, for why, anybody why, why, feel why, like they perfect. My thing is why waste the energy on Vanilla Ice? Why waste the energy on Vanilla Ice when Eminem is because coming up? Nikki is not Vanilla Ice in this case. Like people don't view her as Vanilla Ice. We view her as Vanilla Ice. But the right. but people <laughs> on the outside, like, they love Nicki Minaj. She has scores Stop of it. fans. Stop but it. you know it's true, and it's not the Stop same. The, the culture is completely changed. That shit is whack. It's whack. When I it's look at you. Migos, when I look at all these motherfuckers, I look at them Migos. like they all feel the eyes to me. But no, but these little, these, these young ones, they don't see them at like that. Right, it's just it's just it's just the perception is what I'm saying. Like I notice it like a Absolutely. lot with everything. Like oh, like nowadays, yeah. it's just like what it's just f- like when we talked about like the roots. Like when you talk about the roots, and everybody's like everybody's like, well, what about Black Thought? And, and people that listen to hip hop, they like, oh yeah, I forgot about them. And then they start yep. talking about everybody else. Oh Jay, Nas, blah 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 blah. Same thing with Kendrick. Like nowadays, everybody talk about oh. All these new young rappers, all they do is mumble this that third, and then it's like, well, what about Kendrick? What about J Cole? What about Crit? What about? And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, they dope. But these Migos and all these blah 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 blah, and they whacking this yeah. third. Like that's how the conversation always end up going. It's like, yeah, that's they doing, stupid. they doing their thing. That's what's up. But that's let's talk about this. You know, listen, like, listen, 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 listen. If I was, if I was Remy Ma. And I was heading up an attack on somebody. It would not be Nicki Minaj. If I was heading up an attack against somebody, it would be somebody like Rhapsody. It would be somebody like somebody that's out here making noise in the MC category. But why are you beefing with somebody that's not bothering anybody? That's like you know, that's like somebody. They, they in the they they in the lane for the number one slot for the MC category. Like Rhapsody got that. It's Rhapsody right now. Rhapsody right now. Fuck. Ain't nobody talking about Nicki Minaj. They talking about Rhapsody. Depending on who you talk to. <laughs> if I'm, yeah, if exactly. I'm, yeah, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, what's the name? It's Whatever her name. I don't, forgot, I don't forget Minaj. her fucking name. I don't forget her fucking name. If I'm, what's the name? Married to Pat Poos. And I want, I want you, to come you for Remy Ma? Ma. Remy Ma, thank you. If I'm Remy Ma and I'm coming for the number one slot, I'm coming at Rhapsody. I'm not worrying about Nikki. Nikki ain't doing shit. But again, that's because Nikki took her to the ropes and knocked her out. I ain't worried about Nikki. I'm worried about Rhapsody. Remy Ma ain't got shit for Rhapsody. She need to be stepping up her bars for Rhapsody. She but need to be again, stepping up her bars for people and, like that. And that's what you're thinking about this from your mindset. The mindset of someone. No, but you're, you're thinking. <laughs> you're looking at this from the mindset of somebody who is not into mainstream rap. Like we're living in the era of pop rap, and people like me and um, Aaron were talking about last week. I think it was this week when I was like sending him shit about every like Nikki declared herself. What was it, Aaron? She said uh... she. She queen, like, of, queen of female. Oh, she uh, she pioneered female rappers. I don't so give a she, damn what Nicki she said. Didn't pi- she didn't pioneer it. She said she she basically reintroduced. Yeah, I saw female that. Female hip hop. So I saw that. Right. Back back on the scene because. But now she may be wrong. She's mad wrong. Well, she's right and wrong, and here's why. She's mad wrong. And then we got to get off this because we got to get the rest of our list done. So, <laughs> she's right because 
there wasn't a lot of shine for female MCs at the time when she came out or when she, you know, True. came through. However, True. that doesn't mean there were no female MCs out here killing that shit. But that's part of the issue is that she crippled other female MCs. She made it so that they couldn't move. And it's been said over and over again. Of course, allegedly, but it's been said by other females. It's been said by many other females, especially Remy Ma. And that's the part of the reason why she has beef with her. Because behind the scenes, Nikki made it so no other female could exist but her. So if you don't have any competition because you're trying to, you know, crush them, not lyrically, because that would be the way to do it. But see, that's the problem is that she was never able to really do that because when Remy really came for her, she couldn't, she couldn't hang. See, my my whole looking at it as an MC is like I understand that Nikki did what she did for females in rap in the mainstream, but Nikki ain't the top. She ain't the top. She not 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 as an MC. No. Well, no, she isn't. But that's but but that's part of the issue is that she created. No space for anybody else to be there. She made sure she was the only one that could shine. Even though that's, she's whack. That's the problem. Even though yeah. she's whack. Even though she's yeah. whack. So like you got this whack MC at the forefront of what people are looking for. And that I whack MC is the MC. only... She ain't the whack rapper, whatever Nikki want to be, whatever she want to call herself. Like, Nikki ain't it. For those who don't know, Nikki ain't it. You got a thousand other female MCs, MCs out here killing that shit. Nikki ain't it. For them to be teaming up on Nikki, I feel like it's a waste of energy. Um, so who would say that that you are not correct? Like that she, like she gave her a kind of a one-two, and now she needs to completely KO her ass. I feel like Kim, if 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 Remy Ma, Remy Ma was gonna come with a track on that platform that she got at a uh, MC, especially with Kim in her corner, like she should have came at somebody worth the effort. I think they came at, at again. I think they came at Nikki because Nikki is the one that's been dominating in sitting in that throne for for forever. Of that, and whether or not it's a a supposed throne, you know, real or imaginary. I mean, she she's been dominant. She's been the That's only female thing. MC that you've seen visibly for all this time. So she's the one that they're gonna come at. My, same, the one that's my same my same issue with Drake coming at with with, with Joe Button coming at with Drake with six six this track. It's like it's um, like you gonna take you gonna take you gonna take somebody that don't belong in the ring and you gonna give them Ali bars, and it's like you validating that person because you're doing that. I mean, I see your point. I just think with Nikki, it's a little bit different. It ain't it ain't Nikki don't belong in that. She don't belong in that ring. She don't belong in that she arena. Doesn't. She does not. Absolutely not. But, she does not whatsoever. But I mean, like Nikki ain't fucking. Nikki Nikki not fucking with Lady of Rage. Nikki not fucking with Lady of Rage. Of course not. Nikki not fucking with Bahamadia. That's, that's Nikki not fucking with MC Light. Nikki of not fucking with Moni Love. Of course she's not. None of those people. Eve. Eve. None of Nikki them. ain't fucking with Eve. None you, of those people. Y'all should have directed that energy at Eve. None. But Eve is they Eve is gone. Eve is Eve not even spitting anymore. She got her own. Eve don't life. give a fuck. Eve don't give not one single solitary fuck <laughs> about nothing. None of these females are doing in hip hop. They should have directed oh. that energy at somebody else other than Nikki. I feel like after I mean, after think- after Remy Ma killed Nikki, for them to come at Nikki again was a waste of energy. So so just move on from her and let her die out. If you want to come at somebody, come at somebody that it means something. I don't think that they should come at anybody else. They, they should just get on their own track. They you should. Know, just, and just let shine bars, and do their thing. Let your yeah. bar hold your own merit. They should. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. But they didn't. Mm-hmm. They chose to come at somebody and they chose to come at Nikki. And I feel like that was a waste of energy and it was a waste of a target. 
I do think that coming at Nikki from the beginning, like Kyra Mima did, I think that was, I think that that should have been done because Nikki kept sneak dissing her. It's like, yeah, Nikki, Nikki I had it coming. She, she threw she it up. After you do that, I think that, I think that after you do that, you know, I mean, it is a good time to just step back and do your own thing and, yeah. you know. She was a nut. Alright. Well, let's get back to our list. Um, coming, coming back from lunch. Alright. Um, Aaron? Yeah. All right. Who are you on number three? My number three. My MOP. See? <laughs> Do you have anything reason- new to say about MOP? <laughs> well, I put them on my list. I was I was saving it until I uh, named them, but uh, I put them on my list because I was like kind of in between them and Onyx because I feel like yeah. a lot of people a lot of people were like. Say that that Onyx, yeah, Onyx is like real mm-hmm. definitive in, in the uh, grimy rap era. Okay. But they Onyx were. was a prototype. There was a prototype. Yeah, but, yeah, but so, my. They were so happy go lucky, Grammy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an oxymoron to most people listening. Yeah. I, but I mean, but it's real. Like, like that's the reason why I didn't put, um, I didn't put Naughty on my list. Because, like, Happy go lucky grimy just doesn't seem grimy enough. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely yeah. fit that. They fit that though. Like, they do. So like happy but, um, grimy. <laughs> yeah, MOP. I'm grimy like... and I love it. <laughs> I want you to love it too. <laughs> <laughs> right? The MOP was, MOP was just straight. Yo, shit, grimy, yeah. you motherfucker. Grimy, yeah, we don't they, care. We grimy, we don't care. The funny care. thing about the funny thing about give MOP me your purse. Give me your purse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like they definitely that's that's that stick up kid in some rap right yeah, now. Straight up. <laughs> but the they funny thing about um up. MOP to me is that I wasn't like into them like heavily back in the day, but my brother used to listen to them a lot, and I would be like. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really feeling it like back then. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really into it. But like when I got older and I and I, you know, started digging into them or whatever, like I was like, yo, this. Oh, that's a whole career. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, man, bro. Oh, you want to no. think of, you know, they ride, they ride. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then Lil, 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 Fame, Lil Fame, we already talked about him off air, like Lil Fame. Uh, yeah. Fame grimy as hell. Pretty they, much. They in the dish shit. They ride for everybody. You were. Oh, they yeah, ride for uh, a generation. Uh, they ride for a whole generation. Yeah, that's who. Uh, that's who. Uh, uh, Biggie was talking about on Warning too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who the fuck they is this? They ride for the whole generation for the MOP. Who the fuck is this? How's the MOP? They still do a feature oh. version to this day. So, my number three. <laughs> my number three is MC Ren. Ren. And the reason why I put MC Ren not NWA on it is because MC Ren is a special form of griminess. <laughs> He don't he don't get the props he deserves. MC Ren is a special form of grimy that that even all of NWA never quite reached. MC Ren and for all those who don't like it, you could kiss my <laughs> kiss my black ass <laughs> MC Ren t shirt. You gotta MC quote, you gotta quote, <laughs> you gotta quote <laughs> Della Reese. Kiss my entire ass. Kiss my well, <laughs> MC Ren <laughs> MC Ren had a had So MC Ren is just he's 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 dirty, he's grimy, he doesn't give a fuck. Okay. He says whatever pretty much whenever 
the shit that's on his mind, the foulest shit is coming out of MC Ren's mouth. MC Ren and don't get he don't, he don't get the props he deserves as a solo MC. As he an MC period. As and he MC has period. one of my favorite solo Johns of all time. And he's just he's straight like he's one of your favorite Grammy rappers, favorite Grammy rapper. And yeah, go figure. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. And MC Ren, not even saying anything about this, Lorenzo, but you always look dirty. Seriously. Look dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He looks a little clean shaved to me. He looks clean now. These Cause days. Because he's a grown ass man now, but like back then, <laughs> like back in the late 80s, early 90s, oh my God, Ren looks grimy in a fucking <laughs> like all the time he wear koofies and shit now because i think he's in the nation i do believe right yeah. let the people know let the people yeah. know his credentials but it was mc run responsible for oh. obviously was um one of the members former members of nwa as i just said he is okay. also um the main writer responsible for easy E's lyrics back in the day sure. Like a so, like, so there that. you go, right there, because he, he not only wrote his own Grammy records, he wrote every Grammy, fuck, almost every Grammy fucking thing that Easy E said. He wrote so, the lyrics for one of the GOAT Grammy MCs. Yep. The only other people that wrote for him at the time, um, generally, were Ice Cube and um, the DLC. Woohoo! We all two, love him, but he, he's not Two top tier. Two top ten MCs. So MC Ren is a is a you know he's a grimy fucking dude. Okay. MC Ren will say like before I heard like like the horrible things sometimes that you could hear big boy say on wax. MC <laughs> Ren will say horrible things like that like all day like like he he just didn't give a fuck he was just say all types of crazy shit. And it was cool because of MC Ren. It was funny. <laughs> actually, is what it, it it mostly be funny, you know. He's always gonna slap you with limp dick. He's gonna stick his dick down somebody's mom's throat. Like he just will say crazy shit out of his face. He was a he was a grimy dude. I feel like writers yep. don't get enough credit. Like just straight cold writer. That's probably true. Okay, your number three ant. My number three is Scarface. Mm. A lot of people think that hip hop hates the South, and it's not true. Like, a lot of our dopest MCs come from the South, and Scarface is at the Absolutely. forefront. Absolutely. At the fucking forefront. Like, you can't name these five MCs better than Scarface. Hmm. That's hard. You hard pressed to name five MCs better than Scarface. Scarface, and I'm tired of I'm tired of the whole gangster rap thing. But I'll listen to Scarface catalog any day over anything else you put in front of me. I feel like that was special. It was it went beyond gangster rap with with. It really did. People, like tell it, folks yeah, Scarface's it, it, pedigree. Tell tell everybody Scarface, where Scarface I would even, came from. I would Scarface. even I would, I would even say that uh like uh. Styles is Styles falls into like you know uh, the the frame the sub, of the sub, sub sub pocket. Yeah, yep, definitely. yep. He really definitely. does. Cause like, cause like you know it's like especially like in early in Scarface career he was like you know like real you know anybody who know the Ghetto Boys like they was just real like you know all up in your face violent but it's um yeah it's a certain way he did it though. <laughs> But then, it like, you know, they got, like... Like, yeah, I'm gonna murder the fuck out you, but it, it's yeah. poetic. Like, I'm not and doing it, it myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's introspective. Like, it's it's real introspective. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what transcended the, the whole grimy part of it. Like, Scarface is that dude that would just bring yeah, you some he, straight he knowledge. He actually plays instruments. He actually plays instruments. He does. And, and, Which but, I always He brings about. you straight knowledge. And and as um, Aaron just said, he actually came from back in the day. Scarface was um, actually part of a bigger group, 
Yeah, the ghetto, boy. ghetto boy. The ghetto boy. Legendary. They're legendary in their own. Yep. They're in the class today. Burr, and burr, burr. lame by themselves. Scarface is in a freaking lane by himself. Out. Yeah, I was actually I was actually thinking heavily about like Scarface and Willie D for this list. Me too. Definitely, Willie Willie D deserves some spot on honorable mention at least. Yeah, we got. Oh my God, Willie D is like, he's yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, number two, Aaron. What's your number two? Number two for me. All right. Well, you know. Um, could put Wu Tang on the list, so <laughs> Boot Camp Click. That was hard. <laughs> Boot Camp Click. Boot Camp, yeah. Boot Camp was banned for me too. They were banned. <laughs> How you gonna ban and the reason banned? They, cause I, I decided to ban them. There was, it was gonna be like Sean Price and Styles and uh, uh fucking another member of Boot Camp as my top three. See, but that's okay. the like that's why that's why I had to say boot camp. I couldn't just say black moon. I couldn't just say super mm-hmm. weapon. I couldn't just say so you know collective. what I'm saying? Because the whole collective. The whole collective, like, you know, uh I listen to, like my brother listened to them just as much as he listened to MOP back in the day, but like that's that's more so the, the style that I took to as far as grimy rap was and like they growing up people. I was a I was like a big boot camp fan. Like I I got, you know, I got like two Black Moon albums. I got mm-hmm. like all Sean, all Sean Price Jones. Like, um, like I was thinking, I was thinking about them when I wrote that last rap that I wrote. Yeah, oh. especially, especially. I just wrote, I wrote a nasty ass rap. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta share, you gotta share that after the show. I wrote a nasty ass rap. I was thinking about Boot Camp when I wrote it though. I uh, mean, but yeah, like especially okay. like uh, um. Especially like MCs like Sean Price, like I just like I don't know. I just always admire rappers that like that can say shit with the, with the type of energy uh-huh. where you can tell they don't I don't give a fuck. And I said it, you know what I'm saying? What I said it, I, I meant it like that. And look, it's look, nothing. Eric told me. Eric told me. Eric told me. He told me like four years ago. There is not a verse that exists that Sean Price wrote where he didn't slap somebody. And that statement yeah. holds true. That statement holds right. true. Right. Every right. Sean Price verse that I've ever heard in my life involves him somebody. slapping somebody. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just I, like every verse you hear of Big Boy, he got his dick down somebody's throat. Some people just, that's the way they do. <laughs> that's a talent in itself. Like, that's I can't. Right <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that's so those that story. don't know, boot camp click, um, boot camp click actually consists of they're like a what you would call a hip hop super group, super, and they have a yeah. bunch of uh, of other members from <laughs> other groups like I feel like, like I feel Smith like a Weston lot of people and, and you know Tulsa Skelter like they they're all together in one super group. Yeah, I feel like a lot of a lot of people might like you know they might say oh well that's they like a uh, uh, poor man's Wu Tang or something but nah uh, no, 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 no nobody would ever fix their mouth to say some dumb shit like that for fear of the ghost of Sean Price smacking the shit out of him. <laughs> oh my lord uh, <laughs> no well, nobody Wu-Tang, would ever say that formed, like Wu Tang is different their whole origin story is completely different than Boot Camp Click is. You got Voltron yeah, and you got Ultraman. <laughs> <laughs> Voltron and Ultraman. Wu Tang is Voltron. Boot Camp yeah, is Ultraman. Exactly. Yep. That's true. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Like, No, you don't so, care, too. So, my number two, ironically, <laughs> my number two is Black Moon. Oh, um, oh snap. See? Oh, so why I did, just, I why just Black think, Moon, though? <laughs> because, because you know how I feel about the rest of them mofos. Black Moon scared me the least. They scared me the least. <laughs> Nothing wet to the pants off me. Okay? Health and Scarce was crazy as fuck. Like, seriously. Like, I, that's the reason why. Because there were too many other dudes in the other groups that made me too nervous. 
I I couldn't fucking. I Black Black Moon as far as I could go with that shit. So you were just like you were just like who got the props and just stop right there, right? Yo. I was like, okay, okay. Well, they all they do is talk about fucking busting guns, drinking all the time, and fucking bitches. That is well, I mean, I just think I understand. But everybody can relate to that. Everybody can relate to that. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody, that's those are universal topics. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like that makes sense though, like for Black Moon to be like the oh, lead, the, you know, like I the did, the more. They uh, are. I did a, a, the, I did a one of those categories because they got because they got Buckshot Buckshot more Buckshot more down to earth conscious sometimes. Yeah, like sometimes they can veer off and give you something a little bit different. That's the reason why I said I put them on my on my list as number two because I can't put Wu Tang on the list. Like every they once in a while. Ground. They're not just Every ground. once in a while, they're, they're not just ground. Every once in a while, Black Moon will come at you with with some semi consciousness, and you will be like, "Oh shit!" See, but it's know, but it's I'm, in between the forties and the bun and the um gun busting. So I'm yep. feeling I'm feeling some conscious about my number two now. <laughs> you see some uh, all of those. Do you see? Do you see the video they got on the guest team jeans with the boots in the forties? I know. Yeah. We no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guess these, we talking Jabos, my, my with the Jabos. Uh, we, we talking Jabos. Oh, <laughs> Wait, this time Jabos. Sean Price, Sean uh, Price, man, Sean Price. You know what? Sean Price belong on this list just for having like some grimy, like some dirty ass lyrics. Like he got a line. Sean Price. Like, Sean he Price say clothes, bummy nose listen, running. Listen. <laughs> this is why I hip hop loves Sean Price. Because he's on Sean Price on every list. Oh, he is crazy. He said close. Sean Price on, he on he on every list. Oh, it's funny as hell. Okay, who your number two at? My number two is the locks. Oh, the locks again. All three of them. All three of them. All three Styles, of them. Yep. Styles all three, P. Y'all. All three of them. Styles P, Sheet Loose, Jada Kiss. My number three is the locks. I didn't listen to Friday on Elm Street yet either, so don't ask me about that. I ain't listened to it yet. Jada Kiss and Fab. Yeah, that's supposed to be like the grimiest thing out right now. That's a Freddie oh, and Freddie versus Jason. Freddie versus Jason mistake. I, I heard that shit was grimy and motherfucker though. That Freddie versus. I heard it was hot. I I didn't listen to it yet though. I'm not checking for reviews and none of that. I'm yeah, like, I heard it was. I heard that shit. But was my grimy. number. My number two is the locks. Like I've been listening to them since I was a kid. Like the second, the second album mixtape that I bought with my own money was heavily the locks. I've been listening to them since I've been buying my own hip hop paraphernalia. Mhm. So you know they grind me. That's what they do. But they do or, it. They do it in a way. They do it in a way where it's not like limited to a certain age group. They, you know what? The locks always like the only reason why I wouldn't put them on. Like they had a weird '90s flossy grimy. But see, they over that they grew like they grow. They grow with you as a listener. I can see that. Each of them. But I mean, they had like a level of floss that I wasn't that I wasn't that I, I wasn't. that I didn't associate <laughs> with griminess. <laughs> When I wasn't really out. digging them. I wasn't really digging them pre Rough Riders, but after that, they was all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Word, word. Okay. Yeah. So, drum rolls and number one. Roll? Are we ready? But wait, 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 wait. Hold Are on. Are we ready? You got to mention. Okay. You got to mention. You got to mention that Styles is one of my top five rap, personal favorite rappers. We are. Everybody knows that. They listen to the show. They yeah, know we already know about it. You just gotta reestablish that. Reestablish that. You just gotta reestablish that. Okay. Styles on my right. top five Ready first favorite rappers. All right, number one, Aaron. My number one is the king of all grind. We wouldn't even be talking about this list if it weren't for him. Tell me. <laughs> 
Cool G Rap. Cool G Rap. Uh, okay, let's give G Rap some applause. I feel like that's that's not your number one too. Mine? Yeah. <laughs> so so you guys know how I feel about about freeway. Uh, about underpass freeway racist rap. Like, if you make me too nervous, I'm not getting nowhere near you like that. Hey, yo. <laughs> you call, Ms. Mitch called G-Red Biscuit Mouth. <laughs> I, I, I really did, though. <laughs> biscuit, biscuit Mouth with the fingers, fingerless grub. Like, yo, let's just, let's just back it up. I love G-Rap. However. Okay. <laughs> however, however, it caps lock. I, however, it kept lock. <laughs> Look, I'll say this. He deserves Aaron running away from him with a can of mace in my hand. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. But yeah, G Rat, man, like. We can't even talk about everybody. A lot of other people on this list. Maybe except mm-hmm. for like the Ghetto Boys and Scarface, of course. And that's who I was kind of like battling with when I when I uh when I uh put his name in the top because I, I figured I think they they both was like around the same era, um like Scarface and G Rat. Yeah. But um yeah, like G-Rat. you know when, when you yeah. talk about Grimy and uh the people that that we talked about on this list already, like man, dude. Mm-hmm. I think they all, you know what I'm saying, with G Rat walk in the room, they all take their hats off, man. You you just you ain't got no choice. Like <laughs> like he the only like he the only 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 grimy rapper that um uh, on the East Coast that I know can make have a list. Universally, universally. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, like he can he can have a list. Can't nobody say ain't nobody gonna say shit to G Rat about it though. <laughs> that's true though. Ain't nobody that's, 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 that's very true. Like like He's anybody like even looking at him, even the last time I saw him in that Vlad interview, I was still nervous looking at him in that, yeah. in that interview. It, tell like him, I was that like, Rushmore, mm-hmm. that Rushmore theory Aaron got. I feel uncomfortable when I see G Rap coming. I'm telling y'all. He is not cool help. though because of that. He is cool though the, because of that. The list, the list does not help. No, the it list don't help. <laughs> the list don't help. It no. just makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no. that's exactly why he on. That's exactly why he on Rushmore for me too. Cause like, uh, when when I when you think about like the the Rushmore list that we talk about, uh, uh, G Red, Rakim, Daddy Kane, Mo Day. Like, I think they all set their standard for a lot of cats that we listen to after the fact. You know, so that's why like we you, they excluded from most conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, G Rap is. I think he's a little bit more. He's like Scarface. Like, I feel like people will look past him and won't necessarily put him up there like we do DMX. Like that's the reason why we banned DMX, but we didn't ban Scarface or G Rap because when people think grimy, they're gonna they're gonna slap DMX on their list first. And I foremost. think that's because of the time frame we're dealing with, though. Very true. Yep. Yeah. We like to chill. That's part of, I knew that y'all would make DMX number one if we didn't. And I would. And Wu Tang would be number one for me. So we had to exclude certain people. Well, Aaron would probably make my beat number one. Yeah. Maybe. DMX so, would probably be my number two. Yep. Wu Tang and DMX. So, okay, Aaron, my number one. Ready? That's good. Hold on. Drum roll. Number one. My one, one, one. one, one. <laughs> my, my number one is my favorite grimy MC of all time. He doesn't just say he's grimy. He gets on album covers covered in mud. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking dirty. He's grimy. His music is grimy and gritty. His clothing is grimy and gritty. The shit 
like I said, like you can't even tell. Like he's not just covered in a layer of proverbial dirt. He is literally rolling around in dirt. And then dares you to say some shit. Mr. Muddy Waters himself. Uh huh. My man, Red Man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, that's also my number also my number one. See? <laughs> also my number one. I love Red Man. I love you, Red Man. Reggie Noble. Okay, so like he comes to mind immediately when you say grimy rapper. Yep. Just barred dirty. people included. Like, he comes to mind immediately. Yeah, I was just listening to like I was listening to like all that all Red Man's catalog the other day. I was talking to y'all about it, I think. When I was that's why I was trying to listen to uh the goodness or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but there is a dark side is still my favorite Red Man project. That's probably I one of the more grimier Dark albums Side. too. It is. I don't know, like, what is it like? I, I don't. Everything that I heard from Redman, that's my favorite right there. And, and you um, know, that one wasn't his most popular when it like. I know. Muddy, Muddy Waters is is considered to be his definitive work. Just lock me in a room with There Is a Dark Side, and I'll be all right. Yo, if you lock me in a room with Redman's catalog, I'm straight. Yeah, Red Man, man. I listen to Red Man, and I already know that you know. I ain't, I ain't gonna get, I ain't gonna be in for nothing less than some entertainment. Like when you listen to Red Man, whatever the album is, like even his, his, his mediocre stuff. <laughs> syrup pancakes and syrup pancakes and syrup was whack. Oh that my god, hot. it was it whack, was but it was hot. hot. It was still hot. <laughs> Red Man's was wack as fuck. And it doesn't even matter what he does. Like, if you want your shit to be hot, put Red Man on it. Um, no doubt. Give him a couple Because I instantly, I was instantly tuned in with that new Wu-Tang John just because of him. I was just like, right? yes. <laughs> I was like, yes, you know we, home. Like, we home. We home. He's one of the few that could. But, but he. <laughs> but. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if you, he's one of the few MCs that if you put him on your track, he's still going to be hot as a feature. He can still hold his own on his own record. Mm-hmm. Like, that doesn't happen a lot. I would say the only person that fucking does that maybe is, like, is Buster. I was just going to say the only person I would ever compare to Red Man is Buster. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, as far as that's yeah. concerned, there's nobody, not a lot of people else. that can feature on somebody who else's shit and then come on Red Man level. Who else is on the Red Man level? I mean, yeah, as far it's as not. That's it's not many. Red Man. Red Man is in my top five, by the way. It ain't nobody out there right now giving you bars the way Red Man is giving them to you. Besides Buster, Reggie Noble could still give you bars on his worst day. On his worst, worst day. day. <laughs> on his fucking listen, I guarantee you on his deathbed, Red Man gonna drop the hottest freestyle of the year. <laughs> yeah. True. That's true. Real shit. Real shit. Okay, so um well me and Ant already did it, because Ant your first one is Red Man too. That was my number one. See? Great mind. <laughs> <laughs> so who who that was we not put on our Honorable mention. Well, so everybody again, once again, we banned DMX, Wu Tang, and Mob Deep. So those yeah. three, of course, are the greatest. They would have just taken as, up our whole list. As far as like honorable mentions, though, I was I was thinking because I told you um, earlier, Ms. Mitch, I was listening to uh, Showbiz and AG. I feel like they they would have deserved a spot on the list. They sure. nasty, though. They nasty. Yeah, showbiz, showbiz, and AG is nasty. Um, they like a motherfucker. Yeah, and you know what's funny? The only reason I know them is because of another grimy rapper. You know, um, Big mm-hmm. L. That's the that's the only okay. reason I know. Oh yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> but you know. All the ones we didn't mention, aka all like other members of Boot Camp Click, Smith and Wesson. And us. Don't forget us. Don't forget us. 
Oh, y'all. Yeah, y'all grimy? We grimy. We grimy. Yeah, we nasty. Do you guys yeah. think I don't know about all that. grimy? <laughs> I I was, see that's why I, see that's why when I was thinking about Red Man and I was thinking about putting groups on here, I was gonna say Death Squad. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keith Murray well, that's I mean, We named a bunch of people like EPMD. Eric is part of Death Squad. Red Man is part of Death Squad. Yeah, that's why I definitely nasty. I was gonna say Flip Mode. I was gonna say Flip Mode Squad. Flip mode. Yeah, mode. flip mode definitely grimy. You can't have a you can't have a, a female MC like Rod Digger and not be grimy. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cheeks, Mr. Cheeks, grimy too. You know who didn't make my list? Also, all the happy go luckies like Onyx and Naughty by Nature didn't make it. The Lost Boys. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not putting all the happy go lucky grimies on my list. <laughs> Do you count uh, Cypress Hill as happy go lucky? Cypress, Cypress Hill is, you know what? That's some borderline shit right there. Cause they're they, way too they're happy borderline. about killing people. I don't want to say Yes, they are. They, Cypress Hill, Cypress Hill <laughs> records scared the shit out of me. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That's like, yeah, hit on the pump. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> How I could just kill a man. How I could just kill a man. Do you, do you not understand how easy it is for me just to kill a man? Come on now. <laughs> I can't think about that song without thinking about Juice, yo. Sing it with me. Here's something. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, like, that shit crazy. Whoa. <laughs> you know what, though? We didn't think about that shit at the time, either. We just sang it. It was like, here is something you can't understand. Hawk could just kill him, and everybody was like, yeah, Hawk could just kill him. In. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> and you wonder why we got like, social pairs running around now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we were way too happy about that shit. For real. For, and every people look at, at somebody like Cy- Cypress Hill now. Like you said, Aaron, it's like, oh, they were they were too happy. Go- they were talking about committing homicide. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's 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 weird for somebody like me because when I first listened, to, when I first like really listened to Cypress Hill records, I was just like, these motherfuckers crazy. <laughs> but they really were though, and they looked crazy as fuck too. Like I don't get that from I don't get that from a lot of like uh. Like West, like people you consider like West Coast grimy ex, like you said, alcoholics. Like I don't get that from them. Like they more so like, you know, like the way you would describe EPMD. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. to me, like you know. But Cypress Hill, well, nah, I mean, they, like the they straight off the edge. <laughs> like like hard, still considered like hardcore. But um, see, groups like Cypress Hill oddly start going into horrorcore for me. Like, yep, that's, that's yep, where I, yep. That's I think that's what it was. That's where I cut my list off at is at horrorcore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can put fine no line. horrorcore folks on my list. Like, you know, I don't consider Eminem grimy, but his ass was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That that shock rap shit. Yeah. I like none of the shock rap stuff or or like yeah. horrorcore went on my list. It's like at all. it's like how can we go even further than gangsta and grimy? <laughs> but wait, wait, that's, wait. That's, that's shot that's right element for DMX ahead of Eminem? Right. <laughs> um, huh? DMX? But DMX was only like mild horrorcore. He really was. DMX, he got all number one albums. <laughs> but what is that? So Cypress Hill had huge hits talking about But I'm saying DMX. I'm saying, I'm saying DMX and Eminem. What about him? Would that yeah. shock rat element put DMX ahead of Eminem in terms of top five, top ten, top twenty MCs? I think Eminem shit is way more shocking than DMX. Yeah, I think so. It too. is more shocking, but DMX shit is more consistent, more relatable, more tangible. Um, but that's but that's where the that's where the fine line is drawn. That's why we don't put DMX yeah. in the. In the heart, in, in the like shock rap. I want to know why DMX ain't in the conversation more often. 
Why Eminem always in the conversation? Why DMX in the conversation? Because it talks about killing women and putting them in boxes and and like hurting people and raping and, and raping his and mom raping, and raping and raping, and, his mo- and, raping and being him. Ra- being raped Not by more his often. father and all this other Not way. More often than and, Eminem. and throwing people in. His... I haven't heard about DMX talking about sawing off limbs and throwing people in trunks so. though. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. I mean, he do talk about throwing people in. In it's strange about places them. that you know nobody will be able to find you. <laughs> but not in a trunk. But like, not worth. It's not worth. It's not worth why you're this, breathing? Eminem is straight shock rat. Eminem is straight shock rat. He, he can only go but so far with that to me. I feel like that's not DMX true. is to me. Uh, I'm gonna to point me, back to Esham again, and I'm gonna walk away. Esham ain't in my top twenty either. He's not well. Em ain't in my top twenty either. Em ain't in my top twenty either. But DMX is. Yeah. Damn, he not even um, in y'all top twenty. Who? No. Em? No. Yeah. No. Interesting. Because no. <laughs> I, I think he probably I think I would. Say, I, I think he probably five. would fall somewhere in there for me. So I got my top five: Nas, Styles, Rakim, Quali, Black Thought. Then I got Ray Kwan, I'm not Andre. My top five right now. I'm not doing that. My top five is set in stone. I worked on it. I thought about it. I cause I dedicated serious thought hours <laughs> to my top five. My top five is set in stone. My top five is odd. Nine styles rocking, quality black thought. No. Nine styles rocking, quality black thought. Nine styles rocking, quality black so, thought. So back to. Back to the people <laughs> who didn't make it. Top five. They're my next. they my next top five. five is it, well, no, top five. <laughs> this, this top five. Your your favorite top five is for a different day. But like just for back to the Grammy folks that didn't make our list. Uh-huh. Um, or let like you know DMX. We were talking about DMX. Um, that we well DMX we couldn't use. So, but um, I was toying back and forth with Ice Cube. And I didn't put him on my list because I just felt like MC Wynn was grimier. <laughs> That's funny. I think I, I, think I agree. <laughs> like, like even more than I. I feel like Ice Cube has, like I was saying before, a little bit more polish to him. I, yeah, I can see that. I agree. I'm not saying his content is any less. You know, but it's some it's, it's some damn barbershop movies, ain't it? No, <laughs> it's the way I delivers his rhymes. I think his voice has more polish. So. He's a he's a more a uh, better quality MC. I would I I just think the way he delivers his rhymes just has a lot more like a his voice is more pleasing, more appealing. Where not even MC Ryan, not even his voice. His whole presentation. MC Ren just be just be screaming and shit into into the mic like angry and yeah. Fuck this shit. <laughs> but I was talking. I was talking to um. I was talking to my uh brother and sister about Ice Cube recently. I was talking about like how those beats he used, like especially back in the day, like they just got some type of. It's like a. It's like a ghetto ratchet undertone, like some some ignorant shit about to go down when you hear a fucking <laughs> Ice oh, Cube beat. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like like back in the day, um, on on a, on, a, on America's Most Wanted. Like if you yeah. play, um, oh my God, what was my the one everybody played was um, uh, oh my God, I can't remember the name of the title right now, but that shit right there, it was the one where. The girl was trying to um, say he was the father of her child. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I always remember because it, it had that Parliament um, sample on it from um, Wait. Rumpa Skillskin. Wait, I always like, ask people. Digging and jiving and singing and skin easy. I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that shit was- right there, boy. I always ask people, America's Most or The Chronic, which was a better album? Mm. 
That's a hard Next time question. on the school's in pop. <laughs> That's a hard right? question. Right? <laughs> That's a tough question. I can question, tell you what it? my favorite one was, though. Like, I know this but, is not going to be popular, but my favorite one is probably going to be America. I have to agree with you on that. <laughs> you know what? You know what it is, though. You know what it is with Dre, and I realized this when I uh, listened to the Compton album. Like I was listening to it, and I'm just like, I fucking love like, Compton. Like, oh, yeah. Like it, when you listen to Me like, too. like when you listen to like, uh, like lyric, like lyrically, like everything in there is on there isn't great to me, but like just sonically listening to like you know the whole album take place is just like. It's like, why am I still listening to this? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like I can't help it. Almost <laughs> like the same thing. The same thing with the Chronic. Like I'm just like, yo, this is an ignorant ass album. Why am I still the, listening the to this? The Chronic is a whole it's experience. Just, it's a whole yeah, it's like it's just, well done. It's so it's, just, it's a, well done. Yeah, yeah, like it's something. It's something what? about with Dre. When Dre put what? them projects together, they just like grab you and you just as can't. <laughs> As a kid, I didn't like that whole like I didn't like the whole West. I didn't really get into West Coast music as a kid at all. I didn't like all that bitch okay, name um, shit. Um, the song and was called "You Can't Fade Me." By the way, the song was called "You Can't Fade Me." I, I, yeah, I, I faded. I faded. Because everybody loves JD's Gaffman. Everybody does. I do. That was the shit back in. That was, yo, we used to just stand around and just be. Um, but I used to, as a kid, I, I didn't. I didn't care. I didn't want to hear that shit. Well, that's because you guys grew up on the East Coast. Y'all grew up in the Midwest, and we listened to everything. I ain't, I ain't want. I ain't want to hear that shit. And it like fucking America most wanted. Was I wasn't. Shit. I was never. I was never like biased against like West Coast rap though. I grew up listening to people like MC8 and shit like that. So I wasn't. I, I was I'm, never. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I was biased. I don't know if I say I was biased, but I just didn't. I wasn't checking for the West Coast rap. I was more I like when I, when I got I when I got older. When I got older, I realized I was more biased towards the South, though, because I remember when uh my my brother had went to Atlanta. And he I came back. He, he was playing Ti and shit, and I was just like, I, like, like, I didn't like Ti initially when I first heard him, but I couldn't. Like, uh, Outcast, <laughs> but, <laughs> I loved Outcast. Yeah, but Eric can try to get me to listen to Ti. Yeah, but see, Outcast is one of those Outcast one of those groups where you don't think Southern rap. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like you don't exactly. you don't really yeah, think even though you fucking hear the draw, even though you hear the draw yeah. real heavy. Right. Yeah. But he kept trying to get me to listen to Ti. I wasn't having that shit. Oh man, I was I was well, I was the same way. Like, like Ti like when that. I first yo when I, I first uh, I'm good. when I first heard Ti <laughs> I remember like and this oh, is good. like this is like this is like oh it was like oh one oh two I was just like I was like man what the hell is this like I yeah I'm saying I didn't want to hear I'm like all these southern rappers taking over and all this and then I listen to um I listen to trap music I had uh well he made me a copy my brother made me a copy of trap music. And I was just riding around with it, like you know, I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, he, you know, he, 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 he really spitting or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's when I realized I'm like, damn, I might be biased no. towards the south. <laughs> I might be, I might be a little biased. I was well, good. At, I was good. At present time, I probably am only because I don't like a lot of the shit that's coming out of there and the sounds that are emanating from it, but. Um, before that, I was never biased, you know, because I mean, as as you both stated earlier, some of our best people came from the South. The, you know, like yeah. I listened to the Ghetto Boys from the South. I listened to King T yeah. from the West. I listened to, you know, like it was good shit coming out of everywhere. It, I wasn't biased. All I wanted was my shit to be good, and that's what we talk about on this show. All I fucking don't like people keep, keep talking about. Oh, it's because people are talking about ratchet shit and y'all old heads and y'all don't remember when. No, I fucking do remember. <laughs> we just talked about how horrible fucking the, like the, the folks on this list were. Yeah. I just listened to Cypress Hill for hours. And oh my about goodness. Homicide all day long, but are you was, okay? It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It 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 wasn't about the subject matter. It was because that shit was done and executed like America's Most Wanted was ratchet on the highest level possible. Mm. 
It was really ratchet was. ass bomb squad. Ratchet. Ratchet. It was it was bomb squad ratchet. Like how the fuck you can't get better ratchet than that. Okay, so yeah, Ice Cube was talking about bitches not being able to say him. And yes, he was <laughs> he was making songs talking about, you know, I knew a girl who looked just like you, you know, like brown with a flat hair dude. Like, yes, he used to say horrible things, but I knew all the words to that shit. But done well. Yeah. Ice Cube got a sound that's more attractive to the East Coast too. Um a lot of, I mean, I'm, yeah, a lot of fans understand that, though, because, like, he was working with the Bomb Squad uh, on his first album. I think album. That, I think. that was why he did that, too, because he was able to combine his brand of, um, like, his brand of Ipsy, and then he brought it together with right. the sound that people liked already coming from a different coast. So he brought... He just kind of bridged those two coasts together. Listen to him. I know yeah. a lot of people on the East Coast who were secretly listening to Ice Cube. So they like that shit. It was, it was good yeah. shit. Yeah, because like back in the day, like people associated the whole West Coast sound with that uh with that funky worm sample that you hear like on all the fucking West Coast jumps. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, yo, the West Coast had a more laid back, you know, pimpish, if for for better or worse, sound. It is what it was. It, it, it yeah. was I mean, but that's but that's just how it was on each coast, though. Like if you talk about, like I was watching um um an interview with uh Kid Capri, and they was talking about like the whole hustler lifestyle that um the East Coast like attached itself to, like that was the that was the music that was being like that was the image and the style that was being promoted on the east coast like when um like uh people talk about like songs like uh uh rising to the top that's which which group is that? Yeah. I can't think of it right that's, now that's that's Kenny Burke yeah like rising to the top like that was like you know that was like the records that all the mm-hmm. All the all the street hustlers was riding around too, so you know yep. the DJs would find ways to like incorporate that with the rap music. So that's why, you know, the East Coast sound the way it do. And so like I think it was a similar thing on the West Coast where like they yep. whatever was whatever was associated with gang banging or was associated with you know all of that pimp, all of that pimping. like Parliament Funkadelic, a lot of the Zapp and Roger songs like. They like a lot of that real slow down gangster shit. Right. Yeah, exactly. So they kind of incorporated to fit. You yep. know, now I'm thinking about it. That's pandering, ain't it? <laughs> they kind of they kind of incorporated to fit. Um, that. I mean, it is and it isn't because you figure it came off from an authentic place. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Like, like it was organic to them. Like that's they did with it. like, like for instance, you know, in New York at the time, during you know when I was coming up in the golden era when I was in like middle and high school, they were coming off the era when everybody was still into breaking and b-boying, right? And people used a lot of they did a lot of that shit to fucking James Brown. So when they went in a new direction when they would get into golden era people just started fucking ripping James Brown very naturally it was like yeah, a natural yeah, extension much. Of, yeah, that makes sense, you know, yeah. it, was, it was like a natural extension of what was already happening prior to that like you know when you when you get up there and you DJ or when you get up there or when you get out there and you b-boy James Brown was like he was like the choice Everybody right. loves James Brown records, so yeah, yeah, you know. But um, so let me give out homework before. So we changed the show a little bit because we were gonna talk about bad bitches next week, but now we're gonna talk about free meat meal. Free oh, meat. Yeah, yeah, oh, free meat. <laughs> free meat out in these streets. Yo, I saw a bus. That fucking bus billboard. Yes, on the bus. <laughs> 
What? <laughs> really? <laughs> There's a bus. It's a tourist bus. It's a double what? story drawn with the top yeah. open up and everything. And on the side, it's a free meat mill. Oh, wow. It's gotten that bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. Got billboards. It's an all black bus. It's riding around downtown fully with number Great. white folks on it. I'm telling y'all, yo, when so, this Negro get out of jail, when he get out of jail, yo, 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 he just yeah, better, wait, he wait, just wait. better, wait, wait, he just let, better let do me, it big for the city. Let me, let me end the show. Let me end the show before we run out of time. So next week, free Meek Mill and school is officially <laughs> out. <laughs> Bruh, real shit. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.